In this video, we're going to be making a core plot map of the United States Census data from the American Fact Finder website. And uh, this website is pretty awesome. It lets you look at um, all the census data it has to offer, especially post 2000, so 2000 and 2010 data. And so, whenever you want to do this, uh, and so, and also a core plot map is basically a map of polygons that shows the um, quantitative data in shades of a certain color so then you can see uh, where like you see uh, distributions of intensities of particular information and so here we want to look at um, clicking on the advanced search uh, the community facts guided search these things are more for uh, people just looking for quick facts since we want to make a map we have to go to be, with, uh, be advanced users so we click on advanced search What's going to happen here is that now the census is giving us um, the uh, access to their entire digital website. Um, what you need to do first is make filters. I usually don't like going through these steps that they have here. I'd rather go through here on searching by topics. Um, normally what I would say the first step to do is limit your information based off of geography, so where you want to search. Um, and I want to map here by census tracts. Typically, census tracts are going to work best on the county level. Um, so if I go here to census track on uh, geographic type, uh, that's going to tell me you know which state, and then I can select, um, for example, here Texas. I'm going to map Texas, and then you have the option for all census tracts within Texas. The problem here, you don't want to do too large of an area because that can cause issues with. Um, with the size, uh, but if you go down here, you can choose a county. I'm going to choose here. Uh, let's do Harris County for that's the county for Houston, Texas. And so here, I'll see that it tells me, you know, which census tract you want in Harris County. What you want to do is select all census tracts within Harris County. Um, whenever you select this, what this is going to do is going to make a filter saying I want all the census tracts within Harris County. Why am I doing searches by census tracts? Um, there is a lot of different types of geography aggregations that happen with the census, um, na nationwide, region-wide, division, state, so forth, county. The highest resolution that you're going to find uh, information presented at is normally at the census track. Um, they're not going to be going uh, higher resolution than that showing like blocks or block groups because of issues of privacy. Um, so if we choose census track, it's going to give us the highest resolution typically the census has to offer. So if I say all census tracts here, add to my selection, that goes into here into this uh, filtering system. Um, and then what's going to happen if I close this is that every um, data set that's available for, for Harris County uh, at the tract level will show up here. And you can see there's uh, a lot, 6,580 different data sets. And it, they range uh, from census about grandparents, uh, marital status, fertility, school enrollment, educational attainment, they're all over the places. Language is spoken at home. The census really collects a lot of uh, cool information. Um, so if you wanted to find out, uh, you know, veterans, food stamp use, whatever you want, um, it's going to be here. Uh, but uh, it might be hard to start going clicking through pages and pages of different results. Um, you can also sort here by topic. So if I click on topic, for example, I can go here and select between any of these topics. So I can select, for example, people, and um, I'm going to do educational attainment. And so this is going to mean um, highest uh, like degree obtained uh, by uh, people. So like if you have high school degrees, bachelor's degrees, so forth. So if I say educational attainment um, and put that filter in, now I see that I went from 6,000 to 153 tables. Um, a cool new feature that the census is doing is that it's uh, for very popular uh, searches, they're adding the su suggested search result, like here's educational attainment. They're suggesting this one to you, which is 2013 American Community Survey, uh, five-year estimates. Um, you can also limit by, uh, for example, years or data sets here. So you can say I want from the 2000s or 2010. Um, you also have different kind of data sets here with the American Community Surveys, or you even have here the summary files for the 2000s, um, 2010s. Um, but I'm going to go here with their suggested. It's, not, it's good to work maybe with the most recent. 
So if I choose educational attainment, what it's going to do now is going to show me an entire uh, table of here, of information for every single census tract. And you can see that for Harris County, uh, there's there's quite a few census tracts. There's 4,716 census tracts. Why is there so many census tracts in Harris County? That's because of the uh, high population and the U.S. Census trying to limit the tracts to about 4,000 people, even though they don't always get it exactly on the dot. Um, you can see here, if we scroll down, so they don't have it, but um, here's the different kinds of subjects. So you have population between 18 and 24, um, less than high school. Here's population over over uh, 25. So you can see if you add these two numbers, 3,675 and 268, that's about 4,000. Um, over here, let's see what we got, 4,131. So it's like 5,500. But they're, they're trying to make it about 4,000. Um, but, you know, you can't always do that because uh, you're trying, they, have, they try to follow uh, streets and blocks and they don't want to overlap county lines. And so there's like a whole lot of, of stuff that goes on with creating the census tracts. One thing to remember is that the census tracts do change every decade. So the 2010 uh, census boundaries are what are being used here, but then uh, there might have been population increases in particular census tracts which are causing that uh, changes in population sizes. But anyways, if we look here at the different data set, the different information here, we have um, for a lot of times for educational team, you look over for 25 years or older, and you see that less than ninth grade, ninth to twelfth grade, no diploma, high school graduate, or equivalency, which means GED, some college, maybe started college, didn't finish it, got an associate's degree, got a bachelor's degree, or got a graduate degree. And you can see all these breakdowns here. And some of the census tracts, you're going to see some major disparities. So, for example, here in census tract 1000, um, we have 21% of people having a graduate or professional degree, which is very high. 22% um, of people having a bachelor's degree. If you add those two numbers together, that's almost like 41% of the, of the entire census tract um, having a bachelor's degree or higher. And you can see here they even have a bachelor's degree or higher, which is very high. But now if I look at census tract 2101, the percentage of bachelor's degrees and higher is at 3.5%. So there's a huge disparity here between just these two. But, you know, when you try to look at these numbers, it's kind of hard to see it. It's probably easier to see the distribution when you look at making a map. So this is what we're doing in this video is create a map. So if you could click on this create a map, it's going to cause all the different data sets to uh, get uh, URLs. Uh, so you can like click on them. And you want to click on the variable that you're interested in within one census tract. It's going to populate through all the census tracts in your map. So if I'm interested in, for example, percent of bachelor's degrees or higher, I can click on 44.1%. And it's going to map that one, and it's also going to map this 3.5%. And so if I click on that, um, it's going to load now, and I can say show map. And then oh, all you get your map view over here. And so <clears throat> it usually takes a little bit of time to load up. Um, there's a few things to remember when it comes to census tracts. They're going to vary in geographic area. Some of the ones that have less population densities are going to be a lot larger than the areas that have high populations because they're trying to keep that 4,000 uh, set up, uh, trying to keep it about 4,000 uh, people. And so you're going to see different size polygons. Uh, downtown areas are going to have very small polygons. Suburban areas might have a little bit larger polygons. And um, so just keep that in mind. And then what we're going to be working with are core plot maps. Again, core plot map is a map that's uh, taking uh, information, uh, quantitative information, and uh, displaying it as a color gradient. And typically, it's going to be the darker the color, the more something is. And so you can see here, for example, we have our data class. So here's Harris County. Here's Houston downtown, uh, Fort Bend, Galveston, so forth. Uh, and then you can see here in our data classes, we have the breakdowns. So uh, yellow is going to be the lowest at 3 to 12 percent, with 61 to 88 percent being the highest. And, um, and then, of course, you can see here, this, you can zoom in and look around. So if I zoom in a little bit, I can see there's a major uh, changes in uh, educational attainment. So, for example, here um, in this area, this is like a Westheimer area, uh, Galleria uh, with I-10. Uh, so you have like a 
kind of like a, a nicer or you could say richer area uh, and you can see that there is 61 to 88 percent of that area having bachelor's degrees or higher so this is a highly educated neighborhood while other areas like this yellow area you're having lower educational attainment of 12 percent or less and it's just amazing how segregated this is in in here in Harris County but this is typical for the entire United States uh, you're gonna have neighborhoods very segregated by educational attainment and that's because uh, more typically uh, educational uh, getting a getting a degree is going to um, give you op, uh, you're gonna have lower unemployment rates you're gonna have higher paying jobs and so um, you'll have more buying power when it comes to buying your your house and so or, or renting your place and so that's what you're kind of seeing is that um, areas are if you map this out you're gonna probably find very good correlations with uh, income and you're probably gonna find very correlations with the property values and so like this kind of economics is, is really segregating a lot of parts and it's amazing that you can see this uh, big difference um, one thing that you can do with this core plus map is also uh, change the number of classes. So I can say here seven classes, for example. Um, I can even change the color. Educational attainment might not be green, might not be the best, because uh, sometimes people think about money. Maybe a blue might be an interesting one. And then also you can change the way, the method of it breaking down. Um, so there's the natural methods um, way. Uh, let's see if here if they have a little explanation of it. Uh, yeah, so natural methods identifies groups that naturally exist in the data set. There's like an algorithm that goes through and it looks for clustering. Um, quantiles is a measure uh, using a unit of measurements and ranking them um, and dividing to equal number of classes. And there's equal intervals. And then, of course, there's your own choice user defined. Um, natural breaks is typically good. The only issue is that you get these kind of weird numbers sometimes. Um, but let's see what happens now with the. Uh, seven classes and um, and natural breaks and see if we can get a little bit more uh, uh, variation in the distribution because uh, right now the class whenever you choose a class for example if something if a census block is falling just underneath it's going to just underneath for example or 65 it's going to be grouped here even though it's really close to this group so it's just one thing that happens um, and you can see here the same kind of distribution patterns. So it's very nice. Um, this is zoom um, out again uh, to all of Harris County. That's good. And so if you like your map and you want to maybe show it off at a presentation or something, you can go here and actually make a map. So I can say here landscape. I can choose paper size. I can say like Harris County um, percent. No. of uh, bachelor's degree, bachelor's, this is a bachelor's, so they say, okay, and it's pretty cool, like the, so this uh, new census fact finder uh, at factfinder.census.gov has the ability now to not just download the data in Excel spreadsheets and, or CSVs, comma separated values, we actually have now the ability with a little web GIS system here to visualize your data and even print a map. Um, uh, one thing that you can also do that's really cool is that you can even download this data set directly into your GIS system um, by uh, or to your GI system by going and um, clicking on the download button. Uh, I'll show you this in a second. Well, basically this builds this and gives you a PDF. Uh, it usually takes a little bit of time. Um, but if you go here, you can always say download. If you are a cool GIS user, you can come here and say I want to download a shape file. And this is going to give you a shape file and a spreadsheet that's ready to be joined for your shape file. So um, basically, that's how you use the Fact Finder website to um, create a core plot map, to uh, download the uh, data sets, um, and even to uh, print the map if you want.